Good morning, everyone. It's Wednesday, November 30th. I can't believe we have just one more left of 2022. So as we approach the holiday season and really just get into uh, the final month of our of, of 2022, I really wanted to make sure and, and we have a good market update today. So stay tuned for that. I'll be happy to share my broker take on the CAR slides from Jordan Levine. And I appreciate all you guys being here on time. And for those of you affiliates who are working, we're very, very happy and uh, pleased to have you share with us your industry news, what's going on in your territory, any changes to expect, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, share with us a little bit about that. So with that further ado, I'd like our affiliates to come join and share. So I'll start with you, Pamela. I heard you, and, uh, and then we'll go right after that to Sage Gomez. Hi, everybody. Pam with American Home Shield Home Warranty, Cobalt Banker Home Protection. Um, wanted to make sure now that it's going to probably start be raining, that our roof coverage is already included in our Shield Complete Plan, as well as a free service fee on the rekey, which is $85. So let's make sure our clients know about that. You can even make it like it's a gift from you. Um, but no one else has that. And I want to make sure that you guys know that that is there. It's already included in the plan, um, Shield Complete and Roof. So um, call me if you have questions. I'm always here for you. And uh, if you need any marketing tools, it says Coldwell Banker. So it has the brand Coldwell Banker Home Protection. So if you need any of that, let me know and I can order them for you. Uh, thanks so much. Be safe out there. Be healthy. And um, we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Right. Thank you very much. Thank Sage, you, you're Norman. on up next, and then I'll have Scott come on after. Good morning, everyone. Sage Gomez here with my NHC. I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. My brain still isn't all there today. So <laughs> I hope everyone had a good time. Also, um, just keep in mind, just because you guys are a Crest office, it doesn't automatically mean that you're going to get the Crest NHC. You have to specify it in the RPA. Never assume. Exactly with Crest Home Warranty. Whoever you're using for home warranty, you have to specify Crest Home Warranty 13 months and put whatever rep. Never assume. And we've said this over and over again, but if you add the Crest NHC, you get an additional $25,000 in Crest and E and O insurance. If you add it with a Crest Home Warranty company, you get a total of $75,000 in Crest e &O insurance. It's a no brainer. So why wouldn't you do that? So make sure to write Crest NHC in your RPA. And if you need any help with that, if you have any questions regarding that, don't hesitate to ask. I'm always here to help. Sage Gomez is my NHC, but you guys are Crest NHC. Um, everyone have a good day. Thank you. Thanks for the reminder, Sage. And she said absolutely true. So if you are going to order from them, just go ahead and let them know that it's a we are a Crest office, which is Really, really beneficial when you use this plan. There's no extra cost to your clients or the uh, the reports, uh, just more coverage. Uh, let's go ahead and join with Scott Shimamoto, and then I'll have Nicole Menard right after that. Scott? All right, thanks uh, for letting us participate, Calvin. Uh, Scott Shimamoto, Journey Mortgage Advisors. So uh, like Calvin said, they're having a big speech today. Uh, Jerome Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve is gonna be making a speech at 10.30. And um, what we're trying to do or what everybody wants to see uh, for interest rates is for inflation to get under control. So we'll see what happens there. Um, inflation is the arch enemy of rates, uh, mortgage rates. So uh, higher the inflation, higher the mortgage rates. But what that does right now, since rates are high, what it does is puts people who are buying a house in a great position. This is a great time to buy a house because you buy the house at a high interest rate. It kind of holds, you know, prices of the houses down. Less people are, you know, people are scared to get in the market, which is kind of dumb, but uh, they're scared to get in the market, but it's the best time to buy because you buy it with a high interest rate. Later on, when hopefully inflation gets under control, rates come back down to where we think they're supposed to be. Then you refinance. You got the house for a lower price. Now you're going to get a lower monthly payment. So it's all good, you know? So uh, yeah. So if your clients are sitting on the fence right now, Tell them this is the time to try and buy, and uh, I'd love to help them with the pre-approval. Thanks, uh, thanks again, Calvin. Oh, go Trojans! Forgot that. Go Trojans. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> had to plug Friday. that in, right? You had to, okay. I wish I could say that about my Bears, but they're, they're always. Terrible <laughs> every year. 
But what you said is absolutely true. When the markets are fearful, that is the time and opportunity to purchase or buy and invest. And obviously, you know, yeah, there's some bad deals or some overpriced properties. And yes, there's a lot of fear in, uh, on the rates that they see on paper right now. But this is a temporary situation where we're fighting and kind of what's called uh, tightening our money supply. So this is temporary. So maybe in a year, as as it'll be like this for a, a, a period of time, maybe maybe six to nine months of of slowness, and uh, that's a great opportunity. Like you just said, the prices are falling uh, in many many different market areas that really make to me is, is is below the cost of construction. So why not invest if you know your 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 rental rate or if you're if you're looking to buy yourself, you can take the chance, pay pay high rates for a year, always refinance later on. And and this is this is to me this is an opportunity as well, so I uh, definitely agree with everything you've said. Let's go ahead and join with Nicole and share with us anything you have on the title arena. Good morning, thank you so much. It's a blessing to be here with all of you today. Happy month end, Nicole Menard Fidelity National Title, and just what uh, Calvin has uh, shared as well as Scott, it is a fantastic time to prospect. I know we're heading into the last month of the year. Wow, I cannot believe it, December tomorrow. Um, if you guys are looking for market information, we have many, many different resources to help you, but as you know, competition is less, so it's perfect time for your buyers to get in, and we have the tools and resources to help you. So. Don't put the brakes on because it's the holidays. It's a perfect time to reach out to your clients, your past clients, your existing clients, and stay in motion. We're here to help, and we're not letting up as well. So keep us in mind for your title needs, Nicole and Yvonne, Fidelity National Title, and happy holidays. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Great seeing you uh, as you stop by as well. Uh, so I can tell you still are you still in prospecting and doing on um, and reaching out to others. Uh, I'll have John Wax next and then Angie. Thank you, Kelvin. Thank you for allowing us to be here for all these years. <laughs> John Wax, Snap and HD, 28 years in the business, here to consult with you, not only just provide the reports to you. We have $10 million. We step in the shoes to protect you and all parties of the transaction. Remember, we do have the free renters report so that you can get that for your leases. It is a requirement and there's a place to sign off on it. It's a flood zone only report. And the property tax estimator is a great tool to help you with the buyers within seconds, figure out what their supplemental tax duties are gonna be. Because remember, supplemental taxes are due and owing. When they say, well, I have impounds, why do I have to pay that? Because impounds are for future taxes. The supplemental taxes are the prorated taxes after escrow closes and they could come the bill from six to nine months later. So it's, it's confusing for them. You can print it out, put it in the file and that way they have it, even though they're still going to call you, at least you provided them with information so they can figure out how much their obligation is going to be. Um, another thing is order at time of listing or even better order it and bring it to a listing appointment, show them the possible, the possible uh, seller, that, hey, I know all about your property, including the taxes, including any hazard that may affect the property. And then that way they see that you're serious and that you know all about their property <laughs> besides you knowing about their area and other information. But my biggest tip to you, hibernation, guys, over probably 70% of the industry is sleeping. This is the time to be available like I am working throughout the holidays because you want to have some money next year. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to line up some clients and making sure that they know you're there to help them even answer questions. They may not be ready, but answering questions sets them up and allows them to know that, hey, I'm here to help you and I care about you. Okay. And my biggest tip, always wear badges, cards, pen, appropriate documents with you because you never know where the next deal is coming from. And then also check out to charitable organizations because they always need help and conversations come up about real estate when you're there. It's just, it's just part of the deal. My information will be in the chat. Thank you, Kelvin. Thank you, Coal Banker Dynasty and uh, John Wax Snap on HD. 
Thanks for that, John. Angie, uh, you're on up. Come on in. Hi, Kellerman. Okay, Let's guys, see. John hit it on the spot. Let's go fishing. Let's go farming. If you guys need any um, farm information, please let us know. Right now, it's the holidays. It's still You still have enough time to send out your holiday cards. If you need some advice on how to send them out or what to send out, um, if you need labels, we can print those out for you. If you need some marketing help with with any of your holiday um, information that you uh, holiday um, ideas or thoughts, those are some things that we can also help you with. We do have the calendar of events. So if you want to go farming, um, you can use that as a, a template um, for yourself for farming. So we have all the different tools. Let's not hibernate, like John said. Let's go fishing. Let's go farming, and let's go get those deals because we need to get a uh, bag full of fish by January. Here to help you grow your fish levels, Andy Tang, First American. Thanks. The people who like the the bears that do the hibernation mode, <laughs> they they stock up on they get their be bellies fat and they they get all of their 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 so yeah that that's when after they get their food then they go hibernate. So uh, great great analogy, guys. It's really funny. Uh, and I see uh, two people just joined us. Okay, so I'll have Jason Hellowell. You're up next, and then Unita. You're gonna close us off. Jason, what's going on over there in uh, the lovely Bay Area? You're on mute. Up to speak. So working now. Yeah, I hear you Is now. Go ahead. Oh, okay, good. The butt was gone. Um, how's everybody doing? Um. Thank you, everybody. Uh, just say thank you, everybody, for a happy new year coming up pretty soon. Um, let me jump in. Anything I do to help, I know the market's changing. Um, things are getting really tight. If you get a, a buyer, call me right away. We'll look and see what the property tax will be based off the new sales price of a new property that the buyer has in question to buy. And I can help jump in with that and to see if there's any supplemental tax bills. Lately, I've been getting a lot of calls about supplemental tax bills. People get hit with it, you know, six months later, three months later, and they freak out. And they didn't know. But in the NHD report of my report, it's all in there. I could tell you what it might be ahead of time. So kind of make the buyers prepared for it ahead. But let me jump in and help everybody in the beginning. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Jason with Property ID. Thank you, Jason. And uh, just a reminder, so we talk about property tax bills and, and whatnot. It is possible for property taxes to decline in value. And if you don't know what that means is uh, because we're now in a year that is falling from the peak, which occurred last year in 2021, it is potentially able on a year by year basis. You can apply with your county recorder's office, assessor's office, and ask for a reassessment decline in value exemption. And they potentially could have lower property taxes next year if you do the effort and means of applying. So uh, there's no charge for that. There's uh, many of these affiliates can show and help you how to do that process. Uh, so just a reminder, if, if you're you know struggling, you don't and you want to always stay and pay your bills. I know we got December's bill is due December 10th, guys. So hurry up and get your property tax bills. But next year, you can probably go ahead and do the, your application process because a lot of values have declined from the peak. But the county is going to try to reassess and get as much tax as they can. So um, so it's, it's on the duty of you as the taxpayer to, to kind of reflect and see if there's a decline in value in your area. All right, we got Unita Wu up next. And then I, I'm going to have Mark Wu close us off. Unita. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. Hi, everyone. Happy holidays. Um, just want to reach out to say thank you for all you guys do and support all this year. We really appreciate you. Um, I'm here to help you still until the end of the year. Um, you need a Wu Home Warranty of America. I do speak English, Chinese, Mandarin, and Indonesian. Uh, if you guys need any brochure, uh, let us know as well. Uh, just want to wish everybody a happy holiday and thank you again and uh, have a fantastic day. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Janita. And uh, Mark, I thought you were retired. You're still I am, sort of, great. but only only helping certain offices out because I value the relationship, buddy. Awesome, awesome. Share with us what's going on in the insurance agency world. Good morning, everybody. Just wanted to, uh, first of all, wish you a happy holiday season and uh, just grateful for all my past experience with your office. Um, just something that just recently happened with another Cobalt banker, and that's why I've been informing um, when when you are involved in the transaction with a, a buyer that they get um, the insurance pre-cleared uh, early on in the process. 
what happened with a, a former, I mean, a, a another coal banker uh, agent that their buyers, we found out that there was actually a claim which delayed the closing. The reason why the sellers didn't know that, that there was a claim, because normally they should, but this was a trust sale where, where the the owners died. So so that therefore it wasn't disclosed. And then we we're ready to go close and the claim popped out. So we had to go and get documentation that the claim was remediated meaning that it was resolved in a with a licensed contractor and everything and sometimes that can mess up your closing date or cause you a rate lock and whatnot so you know insurance is a last resort that people think about but it's it's more and more important these days as as companies have tightened their underwriting requirements substantially so i'm here to assist you even if we're not part of the transaction thank you thank you mark awesome Appreciate that. And uh, I think that wraps every affiliate up. So thank you all for being here and spending this lovely morning with us together. I'm going to join and put on our company slides real quick. So bear with me. Any questions from uh, any of the realtors out there just before I get going? All right. Well, uh, realtors, thank you for being here. I'm going to share with you a market update. We're going to start with a little bit of uh, inspiration today. So uh, today I have a uh, little bit of, I'll start with a little of uh, realtor nutritional facts for our slide. And if you want to become one dope realtor, you really need to focus and invest in your own nutrition and really know what makes up and comprises of who you are as a dope ass realtor. So you got to have 100% determination knowledge, industry knowledge, hustle. You got to be able to go out there and prospect, right? And you got to be patient. You got to be able to listen to your clients, understand their needs. You got to really be able to, to relate with them and hear what are their uh, needs versus wants, what their budget is, patient with them throughout the process and teach them about real estate at the same time. You got to be confident, have a little bit of swag, be a little bit different, create your own uh, personality and make that show and 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 really just be you who, who with not just an ordinary realtor because we're not here to be just be average we're here to be and and helping others and 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 fulfill their dreams so you yourself are not only just to be help people fulfill their dreams of home ownership you have your own dreams right you have your own goals so don't forget to daily inspire and daily dream about what you need to do in order to get there so that way you can really accomplish and put together some success under your own under your own um you know your own savings and, and then your own uh uh lifetime achievements so the only way you're going to reach your dreams is if you communicate those dreams communicate your goals communicate how helpful you are just like the affiliates are uh prospecting us and teaching us and even saying even if it's not my deal i'm here to help you they're here to communicate to you that they're always working. They're always helpful. They're always trying to earn your business. And we should be trying to get other people to earn our um, earn, earn our business as well, right? So if you put together this uh, and digest this, this, this really just, this is the recipe for success. And uh, I hope you comprise and build yourself up to have 100% of all of the above. And I know your determination, your, your thirsty, seek for knowledge and improving your 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 own expertise that's really going to help you question things that's really going to help you improve and uh hopefully it'll relate to more sales on your behalf right so uh that's today's little inspiration i hope you liked it um one of my mentors matthew ferrara who i studied with at Rilogy, uh, he has a really good uh, five-minute daily digest where he puts together some some inspiration. I'm not going to play his video because there's not enough time. But this is the summary of what he's saying. And he writes a note to self to hopefully for you to inspire your yourself and those around you. Because most of us think and wake up in the morning and say, oh, I got a to-do list, Right. I got to I got to do this. I got to work on calling. I got to contact this client. I got to update and communicate this listing. I got to uh, go in here and prospect and find uh, a little bit of expires. Whatever it is that's on your daily to do list for work, for personal, for family, whatever it is, even your shopping to do list, change your mindset, change your perspective 
to have a to be list because this could really take you to the next level when you really ultimately change your perspective on things. Maybe that's going to help you improve how you uh, em empower others, how you get others to look up to you and really want to mimic and become like you. Ha to be a leader, you really have to kind of take the first best foot forward, correct? So if you're going to do that, if you're going to try to inspire others and bring other people up with you to your road path, your, your pathway to success, then let's start with a few of these uh, suggestions. So we always get distracted. We always have a purpose. Uh, yes, maybe we want to try to make a sale. We want to make some income. And yes, we have all various different purposes in our lives and we're at different places in our lives. I get it. But don't confuse the actions that you do with the reward. So when I try to get to you and think and, and consider, really just contemplate when, while I, I, I share a few I tips is um, evaluate the world according to uh, them, others, what about type of thinking? And people get caught up in this. They always think about through social media, Facebook, Instagram. Oh, I wonder what if I post this uh, picture of myself or if I'm wearing this wardrobe or outfit, I wonder what they're going to think about me. I wonder if that's going to make me uh, get some negativity or criticism. And people get all caught up in what other people are thinking. And I'm telling you, People who are confident, people who are successful, don't give a crap about what other people are thinking, right? You know, all of those comments and all those likes and dislikes, that's not necessary. That's not important. Those are all very social media type of uh, things and trends that are kind of not too conducive for people's uh, personal confidence levels. So let me change your mindset and suggest that you be grateful for little lessons that, that we can share and learn about the ripple effects that we can do to really impart on others. So <clears throat> think about this, work hard, not necessarily for the paycheck, but for what you can do when you earn that paycheck, what you can do for others, what you can donate to, well, who you can help out, what you can, uh, what kind of, because when you're spending money, when you're buying and giving a tip to your waiter or waitress, um, those are all adding to the currency and the, what's called the circulation of money supply and the spending actually kind of all creates a larger GDP for America. So it's good to spend money. It's good to, to when you work hard, it's when you have income, it's also good to save a little bit and reinvest in your business. So give back, not necessarily for the tax deduction and people always complain, oh, I pay so much taxes, this and this and that. But you just think about that there is a benefit that you're giving. You're giving it to the government that hopefully is spending it wisely and responsibly and lifting other people up who have their own hardships going on right now. When you pay your debts, you're not necessarily trying to reward the lender and think, oh, and complain. My lender is charging me six and a half percent rates plus two points for this mortgage. Um, you know, I and you're complaining about that. But just understand that there's pride that, hey, I'm, I am I made a word. This is the loan that I signed up for. I'm going to keep paying my mortgage down. I'm going to keep my end of the bargain. And that's the person that I want to be and have other people follow. So just think about, you know, there, there, is, a, there is people who do value those who um, live up to the word. It really, it's just, you know, walk the walk. And, and they also talk, talk, you know, all this stuff. So do your best, not because it's expected of you by parents or bosses or clients. You do your best simply because you can't imagine doing any less. If you hold yourself up to a high regard and a high standard of living and a high standard of how you treat others, I guarantee you um, that's going to really kind of have ripple effects on others that people look up to you and want to say, wow, you know, he really does treat people well. I, you know, I wish I could be that more patient. I wish I could be that better listener. I wish I can talk to others and have a meaningful conversation to strangers, not simply just being ignored and have awkward, quiet moments of silence. You know, that, you know, what kind of life do you want to live? Think about that. Have fun. Not because being frivolous offsets your seriousness, but it does replenish the energy for you to be serious. 
So think about, you know, when, yeah, if you always just do the same thing every day and you have your routine, that's a good thing to have a nice routine. But if you never do anything fun, if you never have that enjoyment or family outing or a vacation, you do need to spend some time in replenishing your own energy, changing things up, shaking things up and getting out there and seeing the world. So um, show kindness, not because others won't expect it from you, but show kindness because it acting otherwise really violates your own core values. And when it really does go very far, kindness. So when I'm out there and 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 giving and, and asking, doing services with other uh, businesses, you know, I talk to them, talk to the business owner, enjoy a moment, ask them how their day is going, ask them what's going on in their lives or why they're having a why they seem to be kind of uh, stressed out, and 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 hopefully maybe you can change their day, okay, and then that will change someone else's day. Do the right thing, not because you couldn't get away with doing the wrong thing, but because you will never escape your own judgment. And that's kind of comes to ethics. Like, oh, I wonder if I under disclose. I wonder if I hide this or conceal this. I wonder if they find out. Don't live that way. Don't live that life or do your transactions unethically because I'd rather feel good at night, tell everything, let the buyers know everything that, that I possibly could know or dis disclose everything that I, I significant defects and blah, 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 as an example. I can sleep much better when I close that transaction that um, at least I did my best. At least that, that client got my full uh, fiduciary duty. And uh, that's something that you can't replace. You don't have to worry. You don't have to stress about the lies that you've made or... Uh, this and this and that because so a lot of times people just you know get caught up in their own lies and it finally eventually will catch up to you stay honest and open not because being right is being helpful but because being good requires a lifetime of learning and uh, that's that's just really you know just being good it's just just really going to help bring our communities up give yourself the benefit of the doubt not because you make mistakes. Everyone makes make mistakes. Give yourself the doubt because very few of them will really matter greatly. We make millions of choices every day from what clothes you're going to wear, from what kind of how you're going to spend every single minute and what activities in the to-do list that you're going to do today. But on, in the great scheme of things, very few of these decisions will really matter greatly. Whether you have a sandwich for lunch or pizza, I mean, you know, just just... Just make, you have a lot of decisions, but don't spend a lot of time making and considering every single decision. There's, a, there's some significant decisions and there's some very trivial, minute ones. So spend your time um, in making the right decisions for the right questions, right? So anyway, that's a little inspiration for today. I hope you enjoyed that little uh, token of nuggets. We're going to continue on with our sales meetings in two weeks, every two week schedule. So I'm going to keep my keys to success on 12-7. And uh, thank you for being and continuing to participate. So if you want to join some of the Arcadia Association Brokers classes, we have a uh, year-end planning, uh, business planning, tax planning. Uh, so this is a nice little tax consultant who's going to share with you some tips and ideas. So uh, go ahead and um, sign up for also the uh, virtual presentation on online video must-haves for real estate agents. So video marketing is a very great way to build and get an, uh, some traction, get some online presence, to be creative, to be fun, to find some new leads and uh, prospects to follow you. So if you're into that, uh, there is going to be a new class that we'll schedule too. Uh, so uh, there's a new technology out there that allows you to do uh, selfies, videos a lot more easier and simpler. So um, if you want to learn that, I, I will share that in a couple of months. We're just going to schedule that new class. And if you want to learn for Immigration 101 for Realtors, uh, that will be December 20th. And if you're learning about a little bit about um, how they, uh, they can get citizenship, how they could invest in real estate as a foreigner and different stuff of, of relief and help, uh, take this class or let your, uh, I'm sure they can allow non-members and, and whatnot to join as well. Um, any questions? So 
here's the uh, market update. If you're here for that, I hope you can enjoy. I'll share my interpretations as an economist who does love Jordan Levine's take and slides and data that he gathers and comp compiles for us uh, car members. Um, so the summary is right here, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up the, the, the whole entire slides. So uh, let me know if you don't see the graphical slides. I'm going to start pulling it up. Okay, <clears throat> it's loading right now. Do you guys see this PowerPoint? Anyone say yes, 2023, blue screen PowerPoint. Yes. Okay, great. So this was just released, uh, what, uh, about 12 days ago? And this is the latest news and industry things going on in terms of this is from CAR. California real estate, the entire state. Peak inflation occurred in October. Oh, no, I'm sorry, June of 2022. And we are showing a slight trend words down in terms of total inflation numbers. And so if you see here from the slides, it is showing we're currently roughly 7.8% year over year uh, inflation, which is showing some some of the major rate hikes and high in elevated um, uh, what you call strategies that the Fed is taking is in terms of quantitative tightening is working. So it is bringing down inflation and globally uh, we are seeing um, some uh, resistance coming down now. So we are seeing a little downward trend. So that is showing that the quantitative stuff that the, the Fed is doing is working slowly. So let me actually pull this over here. So this war against inflation is likely leading us into a recession. So we look at the U.S. and we look at what's called, what are the data factors? What are the signals that we can look really track? Well, the savings rate is one of them. And the peak savings rate was around 26% in April of 2020, right when we got a bunch of stimulus. And then as we slowly, time passes, we're seeing that the savings rate of Americans in around July, uh, this is the last quarter, shows 3%. That is a significant trend downwards on savings. And that's really because of cost of everything is still very elevated right now. So we look at consumer credit growth. Credit is consumer revolving credit, like credit cards. And you can see back then in 2021, there was very there was not that much credit. Everyone was, was actually doing very relatively well, paying off their bills on time. But we're seeing a, a significant climb in revolving credit utilized. And that's at around 15% as of the last quarter, 9 uh, September 1st. Definitely way above um, you know, the non-revolving credit. So this is a, a, a negative signal that potentially leads us to a recession when people would start borrowing more, especially when they have to pay high interest rates on that credit. So the yield curve is another predictive signal that we should definitely look strongly on. This is something that I'm very fearful of as well because the yield curve tends to predict recessions very, very closely. You can see back in the 1980s, Whenever there's a red line downturn on the yield curve, we immediately see subsequently shaded areas that tells us and signal us what is defined as a, a recessionary period. It happened again right after the dot-com bubble in 2001. And it also happened again in 2008 and 2009 when there was red. Guess what, guys? We're slightly and, and showing multiple months in a row of being in the red. So this is the clear signal to us as realtors and for us as consultants to our clients that we are in a 20-week inversion yield, um, definitely in a recessionary period and heading towards that trend. So it's time to prepare. Or we should have been prepared already. How, how can I also predict this in terms of a signal? We can look at household wealth. 
a predictive indicator really leads towards a recession when you see negative red periods, like we again, in the same periods back in the 70s, we see the red periods and the recessionary periods are now highlighted in gray for your easy convenience to see that they match, that when the household wealth is negative, like it is today around negative 7%, this is the first bar negative from a very positive past uh, 10 years. We're seeing a one of the lowest red bars in the last 11 years. So this is a clear sh showing um, approach that we're in a recession on household wealth as another signal. So if you're still confused or question whether the markets are going up or going down, let's take a look at more clear signals. So the Fed's war... This is called quantitative tightening on the money supply. Yes, they're trying to take away and move money away from the money supply. So that way we can have a, a stronger dollar. So it really is hurting what's called buyer's purchasing power. So let's take a look at key interest rates, guys. Let's take a look at where we're at. And the key interest rates for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage Back in 2020 and 21, we had very, very unprecedented levels of under 4%, hovering at 3%, and 2.65% was the low back in January 1st of 2021. And we've been hovering at this nice level, which really caused a surge in values and prices. And really, everyone was just booming to buy real estate and fighting for it because we could borrow so cheap. Um, so this was a great period to purchase because of the financing and people were paying 100, 200, 300,000 over asking on many kinds of homes. And as the rates quickly elevated, actually, this is the historically one of the quickest rises in the last 30 years. We see it quickly boom all the way to today, which is now at 6.61%. Some of you are saying that's, wow, that's so high, 6.6%. But actually, that's a signal down because it was at around seven, seven and a quarter percent just a few months ago. So actually, I'm like, I'm actually seeing and it's nice to have that come down a little bit. For those of you who have a, a buyer that's still kind of on the fence, this is a nice way to let them know that, hey, the rates are slightly getting better. Six and six and point six, six point five percent. That's not too bad. OK, so let's go ahead and and, and educate our clients that there's a signal and going down now. Um, and the treasury yields are also still remain really, really high right now as well. So I don't know if you got, uh, uh, if you invest, I invested in treasury bonds. If you haven't yield that up, uh, I actually just for the first time researched it last year. Uh, I mean, it's two months ago and they were offering 9.6, 9 point something percent for a 10 year, uh, for a treasury yield. Bond. And so I just went in ahead and bought one. So it was really cool uh, to see that that rate um, and a lot of big, big money. And there are investing in U.S. bonds as well. Uh, foreigners. So uh, more buying power for buyers given to sellers. Really, really, the interest rate is the number one reason why the market activity is relatively slow right now. So if you want to educate clients, give a consultation when you have $150,000 of what's called household purchasing power, so imagine a scenario. That same family has $150,000 in the bank. What can they buy? Well, if rates are at 5%, they could buy roughly uh, you know, $688,000 uh, worth of home. Okay? And that's nice. Nice, nice, normal. And that represents maybe close to 20% of that value. When the rates are at 3%, like they were in 2020 and 2021, a buyer could buy up to 829000 significantly much more than when it was at 5%. And that's proven, as you can see, many people bought during this 3% period of time, and they were able to afford more and offer more. So that's what they did. Well, guess what, guys? We've been in a period of 7% for the past several months. And in the last quarter, what does that do to our purchasing power? Who wants to guess what that does? Any guesses? Put a guess. I know you guys are very quiet, but guess in your head. It becomes 579,000. Okay. 
So if that's, you know, a normal rate would be around 5%, that really shows that you can, that 7% rate really reduces a person's power to buy something much, much significantly lower. So that's how we have to educate our clients and our sellers too. How come my home is not selling? How come it's days on market is two months, three months plus? Well, I mean, that, that really is because of that slide. When the buyers have to pay 7% like they had to for the past several months, their purchasing power is much, much less. Okay? We need a cash buyer. We need someone, or we need to reduce our price. We need someone who really loves your home. There's a lot of things that we should su suggest to improve it, but a price improvement would be very helpful to many of these buyers. So let's talk about demand. Demand is definitely showing strong signals of slipping because of the mortgage rates. So when demand is low, then activity is very low. And the supply is, seems to be very elevated in some areas as well. So we should expect for our demand to be relatively slow for quite some time because the Fed has already kind of signaled them to us that the rates will still be high for another year. So that's the unfortunate news is that there's going to be downward pressure on pricing. There's more negative news than positive news. So what the demand is showing for us right now in 2022, we're seeing a definitely downward trend on that demand. And these are the mortgage applications. So out of the Americans, uh, the lenders are very quiet. There's a lot of lenders out there who don't have a lot of clients to work on. Uh, not a lot of people are, are saying, I want to apply for a loan. I don't, I want to, I want to, I want to pay 7%. There's not a people, a lot of people are raising their hands for that. But if you educate them that the price is so attractive that right now and you can get them a good deal, maybe you can get some people to raise their hands and say, I want to sign up for this 7%, 6.5% rate. Another way to look at mortgage purchase applications, if you look at it historically, you know, it, it does happen at the end of the year anyways. So the last three months of the year tends to be the slow season. And this always happens from the 52nd month we don't get we get very few closings that last Christmas week. Um, so this is uh, very seasonal. So I wouldn't be very worried. But uh, some people are asking, when should I put my property back on the market? So I'd say probably starts activity starts beginning right after the first of the month. It starts showing some significant every single year. We see more eyeballs towards real estate right after the first couple of weeks of the month. People start thinking and looking and uh all right, 2023 is here. Now is the time. Let's go ahead and start searching for a buy. Okay, because they got the holiday mode right out of them. Sales dipped back below 300,000 units again in California. If you look at sales activity uh, right here, the, the last little uh, nugget right here on the on the char bart uh, showing year to year, October sales fell 37%. That is a significant decline in volume. So that's another signal that shows slow, slow sales activity. Even if you're, you got a nice, beautiful home, is it priced attractively? There's not a lot of people shopping. So um, that explains uh, quite a bit on the days on market climbing for a lot of homes. And so pending sales are also dropping. It is more than 50% than it was in the month uh, prior. So October is negative 50% uh, pending sales than it was in uh, the month prior. So we're going to have a very, because uh, sales pending, going pending means it usually closes 30 days later. It's going to have another uh, clear bar chart showing slower activity next month. So this is predictive of the following month. And that's a, that's a, a, a worry concern for many people who are trying to sell right now. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this price of pendings per price uh, bucket. But I do want to show you days on market. Normal homes around, let's say, 600000 to 800000 or in, in this green line right here. We can see that days on market is elevating for mostly all of the price points. Whether it's a two hundred dollars to $400,000 home, um, the only one showing a decrease is this two to $3 million period of uh, is showing a decrease. Overall, days on market is on the climb, guys. 
So that's something that we need to be able to understand, expect. We're going to do a lot more open houses for our listings. It's going to take a lot more time to get something sold. We should take a longer listing period, not just a two, three month listing. We need six, nine month listings in order to get some properties sold sometimes. So that's just a little uh, heads up during a slow period. You should also consider about the listing price that you're putting out there. Because in 2022, in these red lines over here, I want to show you how many listings are closing above the asking price. Only 25%. But if you look in last year, 2020, 2021 especially, every single month, there was practically 50% of the homes or more were selling above the asking price. People were fighting like, like crazy Kind of like uh, people were at, at Costco last year in 2020 fighting for toilet paper and waiting in lines and, and trying to pick up all the cleaning supplies and stuff like that. People are fighting. That that kind of activity demand is nowhere near. That's all gone. So there's a lot of people right now. Um, less people are putting a little over asking price. Okay. How many people are having to sellers have to reduce their price or a price improvement? Roughly, we're looking at the in this in terms of all of the bars, every single category is showing an upward trend that more and more listings need to change their price. Almost half of them have to, 38% to 50%. Okay. So if you have never changed your price on your listing, it's probably time to have that discussion, that uncomfortable discussion with a seller but it doesn't have to be you taking the blame that is due to your activity. No, it's the market pointed at the charts, pointed at the data that that's the market, the activity, the market, the fed, the rates, you can blame and off shift that blame from you towards the proper arena, which is the, what, what our environment, our economic uh, climate right now is right now. So the California prices, they do dramatically slow down in recent months. And so we are showing a decline in values. Like I said in the beginning of the video, you can potentially apply for a decline in value in your property tax if you went to decline in value, make an application petition to your county assessor's office. So these slower prices, they are canceling out. They do largely do to the interest rates. And so if you look at what's called the price growth of the properties, that's the brew line. We peaked last year in April, June to, to July, a very high was called um, high peak prices in California year over year. And now we haven't, we kind of really just come back to normal levels of no year to year change on price growth. But notice the dichotomy of the how that compares to the mortgage payment to growth that on average per, per ordinary household. So when everything is matching very closely, that's very normal. But when the mortgage payment is 55% greater than the price growth that they get towards their home appreciation, that's a clear signal that something has to change. And the mortgage payment needs to fall or the prices need to increase. But that trend does not seem to be happening. Prices are not increasing. The mortgage payment uh, interest rates are not falling that much. So there's a clear something dramatic must happen. So the rates need to fall. Prices need to fall, which is most, which is probably the most likely outcome, right? At least for the next year I'm talking about. <clears throat> don't panic is what cars Jordan Levine is saying. These are the the negative signals. These are the trends, but you don't need to panic because California is doing a lot better in terms of mortgage delinquency than the rest. So I went today and I looked at the, and this is on a separate uh, slide, but if you look at California um, data, we're kind of looking at what's called uh who is paying and how many of them are delinquent in terms of mortgage delinquency? Today in California, I read I read as 2.8% mortgage delinquency rate. 
And that is a downward trend because the year prior was more like 3.6% mortgage delinquency rate in 2021. So year over year is showing a decline. People right now are paying their mortgages. There's not, and then we're not seeing any short sales or foreclosures going on because people are paying off and living up to their debt. So that's one good thing to say and not panic. So uh, listing supply is down. Look at here. This is the new listings going on by region. Southern California does have a downward trend. And lastly, I want to leave with you, what are the negative news to share for buyers? Well, rates are up. Purchasing power is definitely down. There's a lot of economic uncertainty. We all know this. But there's some good news to share. There's, there's a less competitive market, and that is very true. I can go out and, 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 and shop and negotiate with the listing agent with, for my buyers. And these listing agents are so desperate. They'll share with you anything you want to know. Oh, the seller's motivated. Oh, just give me any offer. Yes, you know, you can. Uh, it's easier to negotiate right now, right? Because they have nothing else, no one else to, uh, no multiple offers to, to really uh, compete against. There are more homes for sale. The supply is still still relatively, in some areas, very high. And the long-term ownership benefits are still there. You still have your tax write-off. You still have your mortgage interest write-off. You still have the benefits of taking what's called your $500,000 for a married couple capital gains exclusion benefit. You still have, uh, even if you're an investor, you can 100% write off all your expenses. So none of that tax stuff changed. Uh, so you still have 1031 exchanges that you can do when you eventually get a gain in the five years. So this is not 2008 all over again. This is not a housing bubble. It's not a crash. It's not suddenly going to fall where it just, boom, you you know, like a balloon bursting because people are paying their mortgages off. They can have, they are having uh, and living up to their um, to their payments. Okay. The people who do uh, get qualified right now because of the mortgage process is a lot more thorough and uh, people are qualified, okay? For the sellers, the negative news let's share with them is that there's fewer buyers in the market right now, especially in this next two months. There's going to be very little buyers shopping for a brand new home. So there are going to be homes sitting longer on the market, and that's to be expected for all of the active inventory right now that hasn't that's remains unsold. So there's going to be needs for discounting. There's going to be need to give concessions. There needs to be some, some negotiation uh, from you and the other agent and putting together, wrapping things up for your clients. And uh, don't, don't be afraid to ask, because if you don't ask, you're not going to get. This is a very, very healthy time of negotiations, a great time for you to work on your skills and expertise and experience how to negotiate with others as a realtor, because it's not necessarily all about price. It's about terms, too. Don't forget. And you can build a high price for a client like I just did for my client. I gave them, uh, I gave them their asking price for my buyer, but I got $25,000 in credits towards the uh, recurring closing, non-recurring and recurring closing costs. So my client's super happy because they were able to, to build that extra $25,000, get it financed in their loan and help them with their closing costs. So they had, they don't have to come out of pocket because yes, I know they got to pay a lot on the mortgage, but they're getting $25,000 credits. So, so to me, that's a net win for my client. Don't just look at price only. OK, know what are negotiable terms, because it's still a good market. It's not uh, it's not where it's a crash or it's not where I, I like to be able to compete, uh, use my um, use, help my client get a very good deal and value. And I personally, I like to negotiate. So um, people were just spoiled back then during the 2021 period where all you had to do is just uh, put a listing on the market and it's sold. Don't be spoiled like that because that that's not normal market. That was just because it was unprecedented with very low interest rates. So this market is, is teaching some of us who are still working. We're not in hibernation mode, right? We're working it so that we have to learn how to work a normal, healthy market. So homes still sell fast if you price it right. 
Um, the price is still kind of high relatively, okay? There's still a good chunk that are selling a little bit over asking, uh, just not as much, that's all. So that's it for the slides. Any questions on the economic update before we get into the new slides and new, new listings? All right, I'm gonna close this out. Thank you for being with me for while I uh, got that finished. And let me close the PowerPoint. All right, so if you haven't learned Moxie yet, uh, this is what it looks like for those of you to log into your mycbdesk.com platform. You can take advantage of the new uh, technology, the new CRM system, and the new marketing and images. It's very, very lovely. Um, I still promise you a class that I'm still waiting on, but I remember I gave you a couple of weeks ago an invitation to, uh, to the class from Cold Banker, which is probably a lot better than the way I can teach it. Uh, but I do want to share our new listings, guys. We have Grace Hua, a beautiful $698,000 single family in Eastvale. Excellent schools over there. Very, very desirable area. 6062 Rosewood Way. Talk to her if you have anyone looking for a newer home with 2197 large square feet for only $700,000. That's, 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 that's another example of uh, where you can get a huge home for under 700. 421 Ramona Road, Alhambra. This is a duplex in $1 million. Great price listed by our agent, Marina Lopez. Talk to her if you have anyone interested in this one. We also have Esther. Congrats on her new listing. 1008 Sandy Hook in La Puente. It's a four bedrooms, two baths, almost 1,200 square feet, single family. Under 700. And we have a lovely listing here in San Gabriel. 8315 Beverly Drive. This is a five bedrooms, four baths, 4,000 plus square feet. Asking for 1.958 million single family. Great, excellent North San Gabriel location. And Eastvale, another listing. 7947 Hazelnut Drive. This is a single family for nine forty nine thousand. Excellent curb appeal. I love the, the photography, the columns, the blue. Uh, really, really pretty home. So congratulations, Jagjit Singh. And this is a huge home. Don't forget, it's thirty seven hundred square feet, six bedrooms. Huge, huge Eastvale homes. <clears throat> Steve Hang has a coming soon. This condo is at eight ninety nine thousand in Temple City. PUD style, 4809 Glickman Ave, 1600 living area plus. So talk to Steve if you have anyone looking for a nice uh, northern Temple City uh, net, uh, home. And Henry Liu and Sally Wu have this nice little property. It's a two-unit duplex, 1.880 million for 3864 Boyce Avenue in LA. This lot of 6750 features almost 2785 square feet living area, six total bedrooms, four baths. Congrats, guys. We got a new listing with Jessica Chen, 14035 Valley Forge Court in Fontana. This 1600 square foot single family is only 636,000. <clears> Congrats, Jessica, on your brand new listing. We'll see you the best of luck in getting it sold. And Carmen Lee, she has a nice Rosemead PUD for sale at five sixty thousand. Very very attractive price for a PUD, eighty one twenty two two Lauren Lane Rosemead. I expect this to sell quickly. That's a very attractive. So talk to her if you have anyone interested in Rosemead. Congratulations on your closing, guys. We had a few closers. Michael Dang closed in Banning. Near in Riverside County, this is a single family for 480000 Good job to Sylvia. She closed on Glendora, 1126 Allen Avenue. She almost gave up on this listing, but really, really worked it, persevered, finally got this single family to sell, sat on the market for a long time because of you know various reasons. But, you know, 
resilience is really she really shows and shines when you work hard keep at it that was your own individual uh perseverance it will definitely show during times of toughness so Anish Chow got this Brighton Street Rosemead closed as well. Congrats for 910000 This Monterey uh, Park slash Rosemead area is 2,158 square feet. Um, very happy to see her get this closed. This, um, very close to that asking price. I'm proud of Tina Santos. This is her first sale. She took it on with a challenge and sold the mobile home. 48000 but learned a lot from lessons and learned how to negotiate well. So very happy she got her mobile home closed and Monterey Park closed 411 Garfield Avenue. This condo was closed by Shanae. She did a great job and got that closed quickly. Uh, she also has been very busy and closed this business opportunity in restaurant 9505 Garvey Avenue, unit number A. Some of you guys may know this as a baguette store. So she helped them out, got it the business sold in El Monte, and I think it was Mr. Baguette. They did have very tasty baguettes. Andy Fu got this rental. You know, imagine paying seventy nine hundred per month for a beach house. Uh, that's the rental rate for this fifteen seventy one square foot lease. So he finally got this one leased out. That another ex example of resilience and perseverance, keeping at it. Ooh, Kevin Kahn, he got a $2.5 million property just closed. This vacant land has uh, agricultural usage, it sounds like. Uh, but yeah, in Ontario, this is a nice big, big 417,000 square foot uh, lot. So huge, huge township here. Uh, good job, Kevin, getting this one closed. Uh, I had one closing on 712 Avondale and Corona. I'm excited for my clients and buyers who got that closed. Uh, so I just want to let you know. And if there's anything else I missed, I'm sorry. Anyone else I, uh, have a new listing coming soon? Or closing? Well, we're five minutes after 11. Um Thank you for uh, being here today. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's sales meeting and the economic update. And uh, stay tuned. I'll give some announcements regarding the end of the year and, and what we're going to do. Uh, but definitely want to wish you and your families a happy holidays. I hope you enjoyed uh, your Black Friday and Cyber Monday uh, specials that were going on. I did a lot of shopping over the weekend really quickly. Not a lot of time. But uh, I definitely wanted to take advantage of some some good deals that were out there, and uh, hope you enjoyed uh, shopping for maybe for 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 family members and your relatives this season. Uh, don't forget to maybe host a gathering, have some time to spend with your relatives and a party or whatnot, because that's an excellent time for you to talk real estate, network with, and bring back and reignite that bridge that you have with all of your friends, families, relationships, colleagues. Uh, maybe it's an affiliation or an organization. Maybe it's just your sports group or maybe it's just your, um, anyway, go out there, you know, put together a nice little uh, meal for others, talk real estate. People will look up to you and hopefully recommend you to their friends and family. Okay. So Thank enjoy. You, Calvin. Great meeting. See you guys in a few and uh, holidays, everybody. text me if you need anything. And I'm Bye, here guys. for you as well. Thank you.